Hey everybody, Robert Ridpath here, author of TLC for the Body, Mind and Soul, addressing the underlying causes of chronic illness and founder of Health Synergy Canada. You know, over the last 20 years I've had this incredible opportunity to deal with literally well over 500 different doctors' offices. And what I have found when I ask doctors, you know, what kind of patients do you see? What, what's coming out of the woodwork? They tell me it's chronic stress and chronic stress-related issues. It underlines every single disease that they see. So this Health Mastery Series is designed to help you with that. So today, I've produced a video for you on stress reduction. One of the best things you can do to reduce your stress is move and exercise. So I'm going to go out on my bike and do that. You get to enjoy this video. I hope these strategies serve you well, and I'll see you soon. Regain control of your life. Feel calm, centered, and peaceful. Function better. Live better. Stress reduction and de-stressing strategies. Do you want to balance more and juggle more stress in your life? Or do you actually want to reduce the amount of stress in your life? Addressing the underlying causes of dis-ease using stress reduction and de-stressing techniques. So what's the difference between stress management and stress reduction? Stress management is really a short-term fix. It's just a band-aid approach. And I ask, why just manage your stress when you can reduce it. So a quick review of the effects of stress on our daily living. Stress affects our relationships both at home, in our family life, and in our work. Stress in our business relationships reduces our productivity. It affects our financial decisions. It affects our health. It affects our immune system. It wastes brain tissue. It causes the loss of muscle. But more importantly, chronic stress reduces our mood. It takes the joy out of life. It takes the fun out of life. It just reduces the juice in our life. It takes and reduces the quality of our life. And there's more. Stress reduces our energy. It diminishes our visions and the way we interact with the world. And it reduces our potential. Stress influences most aspects of your life. Reducing stress is like a tide that rises all quality boats in your life. If you fix one thing, many things improve. Stress reduction is not taught in schools and few workplaces offer it, so it must be learned outside. Before we go any farther, I just want to make sure it's understood some stress is good. In the scientific literature, low levels of stress called strain is good. You understand it in things like exercise where we work the muscles and they grow. You understand it with things like academically where we learn and stretch ourselves with new idea in the arts, in music. So stress or strain more clearly is very important in our lives but it's too much of it is unhealthy and there's an optimal balancing point. So strain is good. It stimulates growth and development and expands our limits and boundaries. But where most of us run into trouble is when we have too much of these stressors, these strains, and we get distress or dis-ease. This is when we get excessive. It's unhealthy. It burdens the body. Our bodies can't recover. It contributes to breakdown and dysfunction and signs and symptoms of disease. An important component to understand is that building your internal resistance shifts this balancing point in a healthy direction. And that's what we're going to focus on. So as you can see from this simple chart on the right, balancing your external stressors and your internal resistance leads to what we call our health potential. On the right, you can see where your health potential is. Here, it's stated as average. But you can increase your functioning and optimize it. Or if you have too many external stressors, your health potential starts dropping down into dysfunction, disease, and signs and symptoms. Too many stressors creates an out-of-balance physiology. And again, you can see where your health potential drops down from average to dysfunction to dis-ease. And I have to keep asking the question, why do you want to balance all this stress when you can reduce it? If you improve your internal resistance, you can see on the left how your health potential starts climbing up that ladder, up that level to optimize health and vitality. That's where we're going to head. So what we can do is reduce our external stressors and at the same time 
we increase and build our internal resistance. What's really important to understand about this concept, it's simple, but reducing stressors and building your internal resistance, it's not one or the other, it's both. This is where you get increased health potential and what I describe as health synergy. So where are you in this continuum? A more important question is, where do you want to be on this continuum? And most important question, what are you willing to do to improve, to get to that next level? Let's look at some of the things that are reducing and impeding your movement forward. So what are the sources of stress that weaken us? Well, there's our mental emotional stressors. Then there are the physical stressors that many are aware of. And then there are biochemical stressors, such as your nutritional status and immune function. Then there's something called your electromagnetic stressors. These are some of the hidden stressors, and they have a great impact on the body. And finally, there are the hidden stressors. These are the things that are dragging you down, and you don't even know it. Electromagnetic radiation, poor air quality, toxicity, chronic pain, chronic inflammation, and so on. And we're going to reveal some of these so you can reduce the stress in your life. And what does this all look like? This diagram shows a teeter-totter that is out of balance, and it's all these external stressors that build up, and they beat down and push down and undo all the good internal resistance, all the things that keep our bodies running well. The stressors tiered on top of each other become too much of a burden for the body, and that's when we get disease, our signs and symptoms. And what's most interesting about this each person has an individual response. This graph shows four different people and how they respond. These graphs show all the different organ systems and so on. And in each graph, you can see how the person is pulled in different directions. Different organ systems get out of balance. And that's a unique aspect of stress. It affects each of us as an individual and in unique ways. Stress reduction can really be chunk down, if you will, to this simple equation. Stress reduction is really reducing cortisol. But it's more than just reducing cortisol. We have to protect and rebuild the body. Because as I mentioned before, cortisol is very hard on the body and it breaks it down. And then we have to learn new strategies and new techniques so we learn how to deal with stressful situations. Because a lot of us aren't taught them in our home life, in work life, and they aren't taught in schools. So how do you reduce cortisol? you reduce the stressors. These are the mental, emotional, the physical, the biochemical, the electromagnetic radiation, and the hidden stressors. The mental, emotional stressors are things like the stories we tell ourselves, how we interpret events, our life direction and purpose, the values we have, our roles, our relationships, and so on. Our physical stressors are the amount of movement and exercise we have or we don't have, our body fat, the amount of sunlight we get, how the environment we live in, our temperatures, our biomechanics, spinal and nerve interference, chronic pain. Then you can look at things like the hidden stressors, toxicity, chronic pain, inflammation, and so on. The biochemical stressors are things like your nutritional status, deficiencies of vitamins, minerals, the essential fatty acids, toxicity, immune dysfunction, how well you balance your blood sugar, illness, and so on. So as we reduce the stressors, we increase our internal resistance with better sleep, better blood sugar balance, better nutrients, reducing inflammation, and so on. But there's more, and the more is adding more fun in your life, adding more joy, just increasing the juice of your life, and again, adding more purpose, more meaning, and more direction, leading to fulfillment, satisfaction, inner peace, and where we feel relaxed, calm, and in control of our lives. To reduce the stress hormone cortisol, we can go about it a few different ways. We can reduce the production of it and we can increase removal. That simple equation will ultimately lead to reduce cortisol production and reduce stress in the body. So how do we go about reducing production? Number one thing we can do, eat breakfast. Breakfast is very important at bringing down cortisol. 
Don't skip meals. That causes the body to go into a response and release more cortisol. Maximize your sleep at least eight hours a night. Remove toxins from your system and uh, heal from any illnesses you might have. Reduce inflammation. Very importantly as well, have more purpose, more meaning and direction in your life. Change the way you perceive situations and problems and we'll address this in greater detail in our next section. A powerful strategy I was introduced to is asking new questions and using new words to describe a problem, quote unquote, because the problem might be just a challenge. The other aspect of this equation is increasing the removal or increasing the clearance of cortisol. One of the best ways to do this is through movement and exercise. When you have deep sleep, the body goes into this process where it also clears cortisol. So tying this into at getting some deep, good, high quality sleep for eight hours a night. Breathing. Breathing has this incredible way of entraining the brain and clearing cortisol. And the good part, I even put an asterisk beside it, have more fun. Get more joy in your life. Celebrate more. Laugh more. You can practice relaxation techniques. And working with your clinician, you can enhance your liver function and so on. So there's many techniques to reduce production and increase clearance. So we've covered a lot of ground. The next video, video two, will cover more specific details about how to feel better by building your internal resistance. Seems everybody wants to know this. We're going to get into the real nitty gritty of what works to reduce the external stressors and chronic stress. We're going to spend a lot of time looking at multiple strategies and techniques so you can find what works for you right now because most people want to feel better now. And as a kind of a bonus, I'm going to put in a special report you'll have access to that summarizes and pulls together all this training and techniques and pulls all the strategies together so you can read it over and over and learn from it and share it with others. Welcome back. I just got back from my ride. I'm feeling good. I got my endorphins going. Um, how about you? Did you enjoy that last video? Did you get the concept of why it's so important to increase your internal resistance and at the same time decrease your external stressors? You see, one thing about stress is stress zaps our energy. And if you have goals and dreams you want to fulfill, if you want to live up to a greater potential of your life, you need energy. And since stress zaps our energy, it changes our brain chemistry, it changes the interaction we have with the world, it reduces our potential. So in the next video, we're going to spend a lot of time focusing on the strategies you can use today to get a success and a win. I'll see you there.